On today's episode, a never not working where we break down touchdown regression, go through all the news, a whole bunch of matchups, and the boom, boom kicker of the week. A lot is revealed and finally explained for all of those who are confused out there like yours truly. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Lot of some rain. Welcome one and all, Thursday, November 10th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta find some filler words. Lot of some is... Is that what you said? That is. I, I was just moving on because I didn't, I couldn't distinguish the words. Lot of some Rip. rain. Yes. Oh, so you were... Yeah, okay. there was, there's a lot of some. <laughs> Lots of some rain, which is different than little bit rain, yes. which we do get from time to time. It will not be a little bit rain tonight from no, what I This will be a seen. lot of some of it. Yeah. This will be lots of some rain. <laughs> Dr. Seuss on the other side, taking care of business. Uh, we have the fantasy forecast today. The forecast is lots of some rain. News and notes, never not working. Starts of the week in the boom, boom kicker. Jason, consecutive days with the pickleball t-shirt. Oh, yeah, maybe I can't. I have pickleball. Pickleball uh, <laughs> continues to ascend. Oh, man, the, the haters are starting to form their their uh, their groups, their councils. They're the pickle haters? Oh, and yeah. There's only one type of pickle hater. Tennis players? Tennis players. <laughs> the rest love it. Yeah. Uh, no. They to be fair, there are tennis players who also love pickleball. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Uh, they, they convert, and then they make money on the pickleball yeah. side. Mm -hmm. And they're way better than us. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. That's, that's fair. true. Um, what do we got going on today? We have a lot going on today. We have injury updates. I already saw that Brandon Cooks decided to practice. Oh, the wrist is feeling better, so that's good, right? That is good. Yeah, I, I, I get back to disappointing your fantasy roster. Talked on the party room last night that I think he's a decent trade for target just because he's a. a borderline free pickup I think you can scoop him up from managers for very little he's done nothing he hasn't been playing he's had basically one good week on the season but I still believe that he is a talented wide receiver who has a good target share and has brighter days ahead I mean you're picking up guys off of waivers that aren't nearly that good yeah I would have Brandon Cooks on my roster over Donovan Peoples-Jones yeah exactly YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click that bell, catch Mike on Sunday live each and every week, helping you out right before the games kick off. Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can follow us over there. At Andy Holloway, at Jason FFL, at FF Hitman. If you want to follow us individually. We are very verified. We're yeah, verified plus. <laughs> uh, it's, it is our accounts. Right. At least for now. Yeah, Mike has been <laughs> following the world of Twitter as we all have. It's it's, um, it's a good time. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what <laughs> happens over there. Jointhefoot.com is our fantasy football community. Let's uh let's move on. Never not working. Presented by Head and Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. All right, well, this week we wanted to take a look at calling our shot on some touchdowns coming the way for players who haven't been scoring touchdowns. We just like recently talked about Joe Mixon. That was your call, Andy. We, prior to that, it was Alvin Kamara. It was these players that, look, they're getting the ball a lot. They are being productive. They're not scoring touchdowns. That's not common. I mean, we know Jacoby Myers like set the world record for um, not scoring touchdowns last year, but he's the outlier. Cole Komet was competing with him, trying to beat him. There is a reason that, you know, the NFL averages exist because it's just the what, what, what happens on average. So these players are going to return 
to uh, the NFL average, if not their own yeah, their, their outstanding own personal, average. Uh, personal average. So we wanted to take a look at um, running backs and wide receivers and see maybe these are good trade for targets or players you can have a little bit more confidence in. So running backs, the league average for touchdowns is every 29.4 opportunities. That is how often the average NFL running back scores a touchdown. And we took a look at some guys who minimum, you know, uh, 10 carries a game, 10 opportunities a game that are over 50 opportunities a game right now without scoring a touchdown. Some of these guys are way higher, and I'm going to start at the top. 132 opportunities per touchdown for Jonathan Taylor, who only has one touchdown on the season. We've talked about the disappointment, the injury, the the fact that um, he hasn't been on the field. And we've talked about, well, he was disappointing when he was on the field. You want to know why? Because he just wasn't scoring touchdowns. And the thing is about the NFL average is that's for good offenses, for bad offenses. This isn't like, well, the Colts offense isn't going to be good, so he's not going to score any touchdowns whatsoever. He's going to return and score touchdowns. I think, you know, I've, I've been the pro Jonathan Taylor uh, rest of season guy. Maybe it'll still take a couple weeks, but I do think he returns. A couple other names. Um, that are good. We mentioned one of these as a trade for target yesterday, James Conner. He led the NFL with 15 rushing touchdowns last year. He has 85 opportunities per touchdown so far this year. That is a crazy yes. outlier, not only for all running backs, but specifically for a player like James Conner, who is good at scoring touchdowns uh, in the red zone. Um, two other names. Devin Singletary. This one's a little bit more scary because you have Naeem Hines there. You have Josh Allen, who could be the touchdown vulture. But you want to remember that last year when he was awesome down the stretch, why was it? He was scoring touchdowns. <laughs> like he, It's not outlandish to think that the Bills running back can't score touchdowns. He is right now 114 opportunities per total touchdowns. And um, I don't know if you saw this yesterday, Paul uh, Himbo on Twitter posted every Bills offensive touchdown this year. Oh, yes. And yeah. Josh Allen was responsible for 23 of the 25 via pass or rush. There was one Cook, James Cook rushing yep. touchdown and one McKenzie rushing touchdown. Otherwise, Josh Allen, every other touchdown was his fault. And I think there's a good chance he is <laughs> excellent. Yeah, uh, that he might not play this week. He will be responsible for zero touchdowns when he does not play. Uh, that is what my math is showing me. <laughs> good work, thank you, da uh, David Montgomery. The last one. He only has two carries inside the five this year. But David Montgomery, great matchups coming up. Yeah, sixty-one uh, opportunities per touchdown right now. So positive regression is coming for those players at wide receiver. Uh, wide receivers have averaged basically a touchdown every 186 receiving yards or, or 22 targets. And there's a couple of guys, Tyreek Hill and Justin Jefferson, they're underperforming. Like, they're awesome. I mean, Tyreek Hill is literally on pace to break the single-season receiving record, but he only has three receiving touchdowns. That's not going to be how his season finishes. I mean, there's nothing on the field that says he should – you know, he should have three more touchdowns if he was just playing at the NFL average. I feel like he's just got too many yards. He's just like, slow down. Yeah. Get yeah. those averages back. <laughs> yeah, we, we got to get Jalen Waddle a touchdown. Why don't you take a break here? Yeah, uh, Waddle has six of them. So, uh, I think even brighter days, it seems impossible, but even brighter days are ahead for uh, Tyree Kill and Justin Jefferson. But the two wide receivers you might want to target to actually look at bringing them on board because touchdowns are coming their way. One is Deontay Johnson. He has 76 total targets right now. No touchdown. Now, uh, obviously, he's he's not being used down the field, uh, and he's got a rookie quarterback. Yeah, they're not sustaining drives. They're not scoring a lot of points. So my expectation for him would be that this year he is he he would be under the NFL average. But he's got 76 total targets. It's 22 targets on average per touchdown he's at 76 touchdowns will come his way and the one that I've I've been talking about probably the most and trying to lift you up uh Andy because I know you traded for him and he's been a little bit disappointing but Chris Godwin right now is 9.3 targets per game 65 total targets 
and he has not had a touchdown. Now, he is not finishing this season with no touchdowns. Let's say he finishes the season with a poor touchdown rate because right now he's being used like a Jarvis Landry, right? Real short passes. He gets a four touchdown season. Ho hum, that stinks. If he finishes the season with four touchdowns, that means they're all the rest of the season. <laughs> like, like the, they're going... seven, nine, seven, five. That's what his touchdown totals were the past four years. Yeah, and if he finishes with four, that means he's got four touchdowns in only the second half of the season. He's going to positively regress towards the NFL average. Those are players that I would personally be targeting for touchdown upside. The last thing I just want to throw in here uh, is just to understanding a re return to positive regression, as we say on here or just a return to the mean, whatever you, however you phrase it, it doesn't mean they have backlogged or stored Correct. Correct. a whole bunch of touchdowns. You're like, they have to get them in in these next few weeks or yeah. they break the law. Yeah, like Joe Mixon just bottled up his touchdowns and, un and unleashed them in one game. It simply means they will, re they should return to the average of how often they score in their career, which yeah, means that moving forward, the touchdowns should be uh, much higher than what we've, what we've seen. And that's the essence of averages over multiple years anyways. Like you don't, it's not like, you know, at this point in time, we look at Alvin Kamara's career and we say he scores this many touchdowns per year, but he right. also had a six touchdown game, you know, on Christmas or whatever it was a couple of years ago. Um, you know, Godwin's had multi-touchdown games before. They, sometimes they come in bunches. Sometimes they, they come every week. It, it's just an average of, you know, these players are kind of bucking their normal trend. It's an anomaly. So I think the biggest lesson for me on Godwin was like, don't overreact to how you feel about this player simply on the basis of how the touchdowns are making you feel. I, I Yesterday, I literally almost overreacted on Godwin. I sent out three trade offers. And I was going to overpay to go pick up a Hopkins in a dynasty league instead of a Godwin for a playoff run and to go pick up a di And then I literally just clicked withdraw on all three offers after I got done with it going, you know, these players aren't different. They're the same, but God was just not scoring touchdowns. So I feel horrible. Yeah. What it is, is it's about current today value. Yes. The value of these players that we mentioned, Chris Godwin, Deontay Johnson, uh, Jonathan Taylor, James Conner, they are undervalued yes. because they have not had the least predictable statistic happening to go their way. We talk about it in the offseason a lot. Touchdowns aren't a sticky stat. You have players like Dalvin Cook who goes from 20 touchdowns one year to six touchdowns the next year. Not a not a worse player the next year. Exactly right. There's a lot that has to go right to get the touchdown. So target the players who are underperforming in that metric because their value is low right now, Un and it shouldn't be. All right, that was never not working. You can get up to 100% dandruff protection. That is never not working. With head and shoulders scalp shield technology available at walmart.com, use it every time you shampoo and see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. We'll jump into the news here. Try to get through it quickly because we have a lot to talk about with the forecast, the starts of the week. Darren Waller, limited, has not played in week five. Uh, Wall since week five. Yeah, since week five. Waller has, has basically come out and said what we know and has seen have seen evidence in like Keenan Allen's situation. You have to be 100 with the hamstring before you go out and try the hamstring out. Otherwise, you go back to square one. And he kind of said that and that it's not smart to play with a risk to your hamstring. So his situation, he seems to be limited in practice, getting out there, getting reps every week and then not playing, you can't count on him. You need to make other arrangements. And then when you get him back, maybe have some confidence that he is back and healthy. That's that's all it's saying to me is getting in a bunch of limited practices but not playing. It can be very frustrating for fantasy football. But if he's at least getting the limited ones in, when he goes, I would put him back in and feel feel confident that you're you're, you're not as likely to get the re-aggravation. You should get Darren Waller back. Kyler Murray is dealing with a hamstring injury. On the other side of the football in that game, Matthew Stafford in the concussion protocol. So the, there's some questions around these two players. Pick up the Arizona defense. Yeah, right now I feel as though uh, 
you know, I think Kyler will be out there. Mm -hmm. And I think that Stafford's much more of a question with the way concussion protocols have worked. The fact he was a later addition that we didn't know about. Yeah, they added him to the concussion protocol on Tuesday. We didn't find out about it until Wednesday. But uh, when you're added that time period, I think it's unlikely that Matthew Stafford is going to play. Tyler Higby was my start of the week this morning. But based on this news, I still think you can play him with Wolford. But um, he's certainly not a must-start player if Matthew Stafford is not playing. That line is down to 41. So Vegas generally, they make their bets just like they're doing in the Buffalo game because Josh Allen mm. officially did not practice. Uh, Matthew Betts, our injury expert, would be surprised if he played. And we'll talk about that matchup later today, so I don't, we don't need to get into it all now. But um, a tear is streaming down my face. Sure. Cardinals uh, talked about those situations. Damian Pierce added to the injury report with a chest shoulder, chest and shoulder in injury. The, these two pieces of news are really ironic. The Damian Pierce added to the injury report. Colts running back Jonathan <laughs> Taylor returned to a limited practice Wednesday. Yesterday we were talking about the safety of Damian Pierce and the risk of the Jonathan Taylor injuries. Is this our fault? I think this is your fault. Okay, okay. I just yeah, want to be clear. I didn't do anything. Are you the fancy reaper, Mike? No. I'm not the fancy no. reaper. There is no uh safety in football. That's <laughs> what we should that's what we should have led with. I see Brooks, you're nodding over there. There's everybody's hurt, right? Yeah. Everybody's yeah. hurt all the time. It's a rough sport. Keenan Allen, day to day. Oh. That did not participate in practice Wednesday. <sighs> Zeke took some snaps and team drills, wasn't ready to say he'd be good to go. Says yeah, his, he needs more reps. I I think there's a shot he sits. Yeah, his quote seemed... Oh, that'd be soft. <laughs> his quote seemed pretty soft. Not if he hears about, this, he's playing. <laughs> he, uh, he, you know, he plans Not my to, words. Those are Zeke words. <laughs> to play deep into the playoffs, so he's focused on the long game. Uh, that, it's, you know, uh, well, he has the luxury. I mean, the team has yes. the luxury of having him focused on the long game. The thought process was you're going to take the week off so that you get the bye week, two total weeks, and Zeke will be back ready to go. Now it seems that's up for debate. And that's a Green Bay game. And then Traylon Burks returned to practice from injured reserve. Um, I still think it's going to be tough for him to contribute to your fantasy team just with the way the offense was, but maybe Especially not. Especially if it's Malik Willis. Right, which uh, we don't know yet. That was today's news notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. <laughs> Fantasy Forecast. All righty. Let's do it. Seattle, 6-3, and three, taking on the 4-5 and five Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bonjourno. Though, oh, in Germany. <laughs> Thank you. In Munich, Germany. Um, take a moment to let that s s sink in. 6-3 six and three Seattle, 4-5 and five Tampa. I don't know what the money line would have been. Or the uh, the betting line on on those two records at this point in the season. Oh, you would have. But you'd been a rich man. Plus like fifty thousand. The DraftKings Sportsbook line though has Tampa Bay minus three in this game. The over under is forty four and a half. It is in uh, Munich, Germany. Technically, Tampa's the home team. Whatever. <laughs> I just you know Seattle is a they're a machine, and if. You wanted to know whether they were a machine swapping out a potential Hall of Fame quarterback for Geno Smith and doing the same things shows you how much of a machine they are. Kenneth Walker, where's defenses down? The Seattle draft class. Look, I don't want to give Seattle any credit for anything. No, of I'm course a Cardinal not. fan. Yeah, I mean, look, at, I, look at your hat. I want them to be um, at the basement. Yeah, that would be my goal. 12th man. I have no respect for you. Thank you. Well said. <laughs> However, six and three is so impressive. Yes. The draft class, amazing. Oh, just home runs. Home runs. The, the the most starts of any draft class in football, both sides of the ball, making a huge difference, and uh, they deserve credit. They do. They, they've been incredible. Um, and they get the Broncos picks. <laughs> I mean. Oh, my gosh. If you want to fix your franchise in one trade, I mean, shipping off the the salary of Russell Wilson, getting the draft picks, and doing what they did with him, bravo. Uh, so on that side of the ball, though, in this game against Tampa, 
Tampa's ninth against the running back position, but that doesn't cause you to sit Kenneth Walker because you can't. Kenneth Correct. Walker's too good. What about DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett? Are they both in your lineup? Yeah, they're both in. Uh, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, they've been really, really solid on the season. Geno Smith throwing two touchdowns the majority of his games, and they're going their way. So I think both those players have to be in lineups. All right. Well, uh, is Geno Smith somebody that is in your streaming consideration this week? They are not favored. 20-point implied point total. He's been pretty good. QB I mean, eight on the year. It's I, I think he's a fine play. Um man, that's the question is is Geno Smith with the level of play that we've seen from him. We you know we had uh you had three kind of down games, Arizona uh when they were at home, then the Chargers and then the Giants, but then a bounce back for him this past week against Arizona. It's is Geno for you guys still a streaming guy or is he like if you're in a 14 team or you just you're just playing him a 14 team or okay sure. now in a 12 in a normal league. league i i still view gino as a as a streamer um you know dax and and you know uh, herbert is is a is a real question right now without any weapons to throw the ball to so if you're talking herbert in a bad matchup without th those weapons maybe i would take gino ahead of him okay but i i'm I'm not just saying Geno is an automatic start. He has not been uh, an every week great play for fantasy. We just know that he actually does have upside. He can be good. He was very good this last week. In this matchup where I think he should need to throw the ball more, not necessarily because the Buccaneers are going to score a ton of points, but because they've got a very good run D. And, you know, this isn't one where you'd project just a smash 200 yards and two touchdowns for Kenneth Walker. They're going to need to throw the ball with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett to win this game. I do believe that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers win this ball game. Um, I didn't even know what the line was. I'm surprised it's Tampa minus three, but well, they're the home team in Munich, Germany. <laughs> yes. Get that bump. Yeah, right. Uh, but Tom Brady, you know, it's been a rough ride of late. Um, they rallied. I think that meant a lot to this offense, figuring things out at the end of that game. Um, but Brady, passing touchdowns over the last five weeks. One, one, zero, one, one. Oof. You want to talk about the Chris Godwin issue, eh, that's part of it, right? And his one touchdown went to Kate Otten. So, you know, Mike Evans, I don't think he scored a touchdown since week five. Chris Godwin, he hasn't scored a touchdown all year. And then, you know, Kate Otten, he's, he's running routes and he's participating in this offense. The, yeah, Kate, Are all three of those players in your lineup? Well, the, the, the wide receivers, of course. Kate Otten was lined up to be my start of the week, the second most routes run among tight ends over the last month. Seattle dead last against the tight end position. But Cameron Brait returned to full practice uh, uh, yesterday. So I don't know. I don't know that you can play Kate Otten with full confidence if if Cameron Brait still misses which is possible with the uh with the injury that he had he could be practicing in full and still not play then Kate Otten would be a great streamer if Braid is active I'm gonna be I would be nervous to do it Leonard Fournette we talked about um I'd trade candidates yesterday at length we talked about Fournette at length still playing him okay and then would you take any chances with Rashad White in this game Seattle's defense 22nd against the running back position a lot of rumors coming out of the bye that he may get uh, more work, kind of like the Jalen Warren situation. I'm I'm not looking for the glory shot in getting his first game of relevance right. I, I think that you sh sh are waiting for a Leonard Fournette injury with Rashad White, and you're just – Keep seeing, him on your bench. Yeah, you're just yes. seeing him get more and more involved, more comfortable and competent in the offense for if that should happen, more confidence to just throw him in as a, as a top weekly play. All right, quick break and back with the Vikings Bills. All right, we are back with the uh, Minnesota Vikings and the Buffalo Bills. You know, sometimes things get typed in the in the chat. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I can't contain, <laughs> I can't contain the laughter. Nothing Jason said was humorous. So, Jason, that was yeah, not about you. I was confused. 
Uh, I apologize for breaking. That was entirely... Be professional over there, that was, man. That was due to reading some secret <laughs> stuff inside of the company Slack. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings are 7-1. and one. They take on the Buffalo Bills at 6-2. and two. One has to be a little disappointed that we may not have Josh Allen in this game because, you know, it's a matchup of heavyweights right now. The DraftKings Sportsbook line still has Buffalo minus 3.5. The over-under is 43.5. I can't believe That's an Vikings. updated line, Kyle. Yeah, yeah that's it, updated. It opened at 49.5 um, and Buffalo minus 6.5. So hedging right now. The, uh, the Sportsbook's considering the fact that Josh Allen might not be out there. Case Keenum is the backup. Oh, man. We get Keenum and Stephon Diggs. Yeah, and you get Keenum. Yeah, right. Revenge. His old team. <laughs> the game is in Buffalo. Keenum is a competent quarterback. So yeah. when you look at this game, I, you know, let's say you said today Case Keenum is playing no matter what. I, I'd still be taking Buffalo. Like, I still think Buffalo wins the ball game. Um, their defense is extraordinary. They're at home. Uh, we saw the Minnesota Vikings offense have trouble last week against Washington. And so it's a harsh environment, tough matchup. Think you can still have confidence in Stephon Diggs, of course, yeah. regardless of the quarterback situation. But once you move beyond your main target in the wide receiver room, that's where I think not having Josh Allen is going to really put questions into your mind about, you know, Gabe Davis, how risky. He's already a risky start at times with Josh Allen. But you have – the ceiling is so high with Josh Allen on one of his good games that you, you play him in this matchup. It seems a lot riskier with case Keenum. If he's the quarterback. Yeah, it certainly does. I mean, if you're talking about a Donovan people's Jones level start, sure. I, I might be willing to, but I'm not, you know, I love Gabe Davis. I love having him in my lineup when I've got Josh Allen there because at any time you can have an 80 yard touchdown. Uh, if, if Josh Allen does not play, I am looking to, absolutely bench Gabe Davis if I can. If You'd I've be got... playing uh, Darnell Mooney. Yeah, absolutely. Cortland Sutton? Mike I would. would. I would. Uh, Mike Wood is the best answer to a question. Zay Jones against Kansas City? Kansas City yeah, is... Uh, yeah, 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 I, I would, would play Zay. That, I think he is the best barometer here because no one's ever he's excited always, he's always on the waiver wire to play Zay Jones. Zay Jones lives on the waiver wire. <laughs> but I would play Zay Jones over Gabe Davis if Josh Allen does not play. That'd be a funny rule in a league. Like certain players are tagged as you can only sign them, play them, and drop them. Yes. yes. Like you Sunday can't, morning pickups only. Only. And you yeah. cannot have them on your roster once Wednesday comes around. Right. Um, that, that is Zay Jones, though. I mean, everybody grabs yeah. He is the spot start. If yeah. you have a nickname for Zay Jones, it's spot start. Yeah. Uh, the old spot start. Yeah, Devin Singletary, 74% of snaps last week. Not that we expected Naeem Hines to get a ton of opportunity yet on the new team. He was traded midweek. I don't expect Singletary's snap count to stay at 74%. Not over the season, though. With Naeem Hines a, an intentional addition by this roster, but I think Singletary is still okay to play in this game, especially if they need to depend on the run game more. Dawson Knox, not messing around. Not without Josh Allen. Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, yep. TJ Hawkinson. Very impressive in week one with Minnesota. Nine for 70. If you saw him in the press conference after the trade, goes from worst to first. Really excited to be playing in important games. I mean, this guy is jazz. He's never done it. <laughs> no, I. it's it's impressive. Um, the nine targets in your first week says that even though the matchup isn't good, you yeah. have to keep playing him. David and Joku coming back from injury or Hawkinson, you'd go Hawkinson. I'd go Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Okay. A Kyle Pitts or TJ Hawkinson? Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Okay. Tony Gonzalez or TJ <laughs> Hawkinson? <laughs> Hawkinson. All right. All right. I thought you were going to say Hot Tony take. Gonzalez or Kyle Pitts. Kirk Cousins. And I'd have to think about it. <laughs> Kirk Cousins is a bench this week. Yes. Wouldn't you yeah, agree? I mean, yeah, if, if you can. Jared Goff this week against Chicago or Kirk Cousins. I would go Goff. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I think I would as well. What about Geno Smith against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I'd play Geno Smith. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Detroit Lions. Let's go ahead and transition to Hawkinson's former former team. Two and six Detroit Lions coming off that sweet sweet victory over the Packers. Oh, so sweet! Uh, if Al was in the building today, this would be my insert troll here moment mm -hmm. for the Packers. Chicago Bears are three and six. They're doing it perfectly. They are turning it around on offense while still losing. 
it's and wonderful. getting the, yeah. the most draft capital you can. Good work, Chicago. I, I, I mean, tremendous. I, I'm a huge fan right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of the Bears. Yeah, because they they're everything you want. In oh, Jay Grizz, happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's the first appearance by Jay Grizz in a little while. Hibernating. Um, no, the Bears, they're putting up points. I mean, they're favored in this game. DraftKings has the line at Chicago minus three. The over-under is 48 and a half. Delightful. See, the Bears have, 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 have gone from a fantasy nightmare where you're constantly talking about how disappointed you are in all of their weapons, right? Darnell Mooney, mm -hmm. Justin Fields. And now you're just you're, you're excited to see what happens, right? It's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new life. <laughs> I mean, this is great. Justin Fields is a must start. Yes. Darnell Mooney is a very worthy start against Detroit. Yes. David Montgomery is a good start this week yep. against Detroit. Khalil Herbert, go ahead and flex him if you feel like sure. it. Yeah. Why not play with a little fire? But I will say Montgomery, 70% of snaps, two straight weeks. So, you know, you're playing lower odds around the goal line that you're going to see Herbert on the field. Cole Komet, why not? Why not have a good – take him for a stroll. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna talk about him later. We have three starts a, of the week in this game. Whoa, whoa, don't give in that away. In this game, Mike. That you, is not you true. It's four, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, what we're doing is we are chasing – Lions, Tigers, and Bears, oh my. We are chasing two inept defenses with two – good enough offenses you expect both teams to be able to score now this is a divisional game so sometimes those fall into the traps the teams know each other well and they play up to the you know to the division standards that being said I don't think either team's defense just has the talent to really stop either of these offenses so I think that's why you see so many starts of the week from this matchup because this could turn into a barn burner based on what we've been seeing over the last month. What are you guys doing with DeAndre Swift, who got a little bit of – I mean, it was a little bit positive there from Guns Mahoney. <laughs> wait, wait, what was it? Little bit some positive yes, or little, something? little bit some positivity from Guns Mahoney, a.k.a. Dan Campbell. Uh, but, I mean, absolute minimal usage. Got brought down on the one on a reception, which was – devastation for yours truly and a lot of you out there I'll do tell you, you have the con the, the matchup is juicy this is like this is like taking tell me what to do this is like taking a beautiful glass statue and carefully placing it down in the middle of a daycare and you hope it lasts okay. through through the end of the day it could and it's beautiful yeah. but, but um, well are you are you putting the the vase into the daycare if you had him on your roster <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, you asking for a friend? Yeah, I'm asking for Look, a good friend. <laughs> I know him well. Jamal Williams has been getting so many opportunities. Jamal Williams is is in all of my lineups this yeah, week. Yeah, I think the best way to think about it is not DeAndre Swift working into a running back timeshare. I think the best way to think of it is they have Amon Ross St. Brown and no one else as a weapon. It, you, you don't have TJ Hawkinson anymore. Mm -hmm. And... Can DeAndre Swift be the slot receiver you need this week? Yes. I mean, that's how I'm thinking about this situation. I think that in this matchup, with this, with the hopes of a shootout, right? Like, I, I'm willing to take the over in this game. With that hope, I would play DeAndre Swift as a flex. I would. I, I, I agree. What I about a running back, too? <laughs> well, it depends on your options, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, what? Uh, get, tell us your options. Yeah, what are your options let's over help, there? Let's help a guy out. Okay, that, I, mean, I mean, your friend. This is a very specific situation. Right, for, uh, your, friend, for your friend. So let's, it's, a, it's a lot of options, so uh, have, have a seat, everybody. So for your running back, too, you could play Got it. Kareem Hunt. Mm -hmm. mm. You could play DeAndre Swift. You could play Ezekiel Elliott if he's active. You right. could play Antonio Gibson against the Philadelphia Eagles. You still have AJ. Uh, your Dillon? friend has a really bad situation <laughs> to decide from. No, my friend no longer has AJ Dillon because that might have worked out this week. Um, I'm asking for Kyle, by the way. Okay, yeah, this is for Kyle. Let's play. So Hunt. wait, Hunt, Zeke, Swift, and Gibson. Was that the last name? That is correct. The Gibson one is the hard one. I think that's your I, actual dilemma. I agree. That one I, because the matchup is tough against Philly. But he could. But he could have a lot of passing game yes. work more than Swift. Yes. I think um are you favored? I mean is your yes. friend is your friend favored? Yeah, Kyle's favored to win. So, <laughs> then you're looking at safety and I I 
I, I think Swift is risky on the okay. safety train. All right, so good I think, news. I think, I'll tell Kyle that. So Kareem Hunt? <laughs> I mean, maybe. One of those guys is definitely going to be your best play. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who, who's your pick there? Are you, you're asking me? I thought you were You're the man me. I'm looking at. Um, I will go with <laughs> Swift or Hunt. Um, and I think I will go with DeAndre Swift. Okay. They, they wanted to get him more Don't work. screw this up. The matchup is good. The talent is there. Safest is probably Hunt, huh? Uh, it, it's, it, it's one of the three. It seems like Hunt is safer. Okay, so, uh, we can't keep talking about so, this. But I mean, now you see why my friend's beard is green. Yes, mm. okay. no doubt, no doubt. Um, that's tough. That's really tough. Jamal Williams, though, yeah, not play. as tough. Uh, and, until you, the actually, offensive line is so good. Until you actually see DeAndre Swift cutting fully into the workload, Jamal Williams should be played almost every single week. Amon Ra has been actually really disappointing. He has, um, but I'm still playing. The matchup is not great. Bears eighth against fantasy wide receivers when you adjust, but I don't want to see him, him slip into this PPR only type of player this year. That would make me really sad. Sure, because he he just he's been so much more impressive than that. Denver at three and five take on the Tennessee Titans, who are five and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Tennessee minus two and a half. The over-under is 37. The line started at 40. Uh, the confidence level of Ryan Tannehill making it back onto the field. It's not tremendous, I think. Um, the over-under is at 37? Is that I mean, true? it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. I, I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm completely misremembering, but I can't remember that. That's the that loss of the year line. that I can remember. I have an update. It's now at 36 and a half. 36 and a half? I, I can't remember a line that low. Like, my have memory's you, not that very good. But have, but <laughs> not that very not good? That very good. Was that on accident? <laughs> no. No. Great joke. Thank you. Uh, have you seen the Denver Broncos offense? <laughs> Might be too high. Wow. Yeah, and, and the Tennessee defense has been better of late. You know, you had Patrick Mahomes putting the team on his back last week. But, yeah, I mean, look, look, at, the, look at the Broncos right now. Corlin's, you can't make me. Corlin Sutton has not been producing. The running back room is Gordon Murray Edmonds. Can you play any of them with confidence this week against the six-ranked run defense? And I think the best run defense since maybe week two? No. Agreed. Russell this, Wilson? This game is is pretty easy to me. The, yeah, break it down, Mike. So on, on the Denver Broncos side, I mean, if you got – if you got uh, you adamantium underpants and you want to play Russell Wilson, okay, it makes sense. I Coming off of the bye week, perhaps they figure something out. The Titans, 26th uh, against quarterbacks when you adjust for the schedule. I probably wouldn't do it. I'd be going with, you know, we, we mentioned some streams earlier or like Jimmy, even Jimmy Garoppolo uh, is in a, in a fine place. I'm not, I don't really want to play the running backs if I can get away with it because now Chase Edmonds is is an addition. They've said we view him as a third down back. They've had the bye week to get him involved. So him going right into third downs, it could certainly happen. But the the Titans are not – like they give up points to fantasy wide receivers. So I do think that Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton can be played. Uh, with not You're not expecting top 15 numbers from either of these guys, but I do think they are both flex-worthy or wide receiver three plays this week. I am not putting Cortland Sutton back into my own lineup until I see a reason to on the field. You know, you're not talking about a small sample size of futility right now. You're talking about the last four games he's on pace for like 200 yards on the year. The and last 30 th receptions. And that's a large sample. That's four games. The, well, the this last three games have been terrible. Not arguing against that. But four weeks ago, he had five for 74 against the Colts. If he gives you five for 74. Yeah, but what if he gives you the other three weeks? Yeah, I know. Terrible. The, the Chargers game was that was the total collapse of the entirety of the Broncos offense. He got nine targets the following week. It was the Jets and they and uh, and sauce and company shut him down. The Jacksonville game was far more to me uh, troublesome and worrying. Jerry Judy had a fine game. Meanwhile, it was only four targets for Cortland Sutton. But my, can I, I share my my sure. main concern is that. You've seen in those games that Jerry Judy target share has gone up 
and it seems like it's a choice. And then you add Greg Dulcich to the equation, and he seems to be somebody that this quarterback can trust. So I do think that you could be right. Cortland Sutton could have a bounce back game. It could also end up really risky, and I don't know. You know, you talked about Donovan Peoples-Jones and the matchup this week, how he's being used. We talk about Darnell Mooney. You know, are those options that you would start over Sutton, or are you really kind of counting on this game to be the get-right game for him? I mean, personally, I would start Mooney over over Sutton over Jerry Judy. I have to. I don't mind that. I have to see Russell Wilson do something, and I know that. Uh, you know, look, last week you had Juju have an okay game. McCall Hartman got a touchdown, but the Chiefs really were limited for what the Chiefs do uh, regularly by the Titans. The Titans are at home. This defense seems very, very uh, good. So really. Greg Dulcich, because he's a tight end, and that is really another place where Tennessee has struggled with. That's, you know, I, I you can always justify starting a tight end in a bad matchup just because you don't have a lot of other options. Dulcich has been one of the biggest start-sit questions. You know, it's Dulcich or Fryermuth, Dulcich or Njoku, Dulcich or Higby, Dulcich or Pitts, mm -hmm. Dulcich or Everett. And we're going to have answers to that real, real soon. Oh, man. Derrick Henry, play him. Don't yeah. play anybody else. Yep, agreed. That, that was easy. Jacksonville's three and six. They take on the six and two Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs are nine and a half point favorites, according to DraftKings. The over under is fifty and a half. It gives them thirty points in this game. Patrick Mahomes, when he is a uh, a favorite of this magnitude, is sixteen and two. And uh, you you play him. Mm -hmm. You can play Juju this week. He has been very consistent. And then with the question marks Agreed. around Hardman's injury, um, he didn't practice on Wednesday. Could be fine. I mean, he had abdominal soreness, mm. which we also had from a lot of Oreos <laughs> yesterday. If you listen to the yeah. uh, Spotify live show, you yeah. know that the first 10 minutes was committed to our own struggles with uh, abdominal I don't know soreness. that I'd call them struggles. I mean, it was or a happy struggle. Yeah. Yeah, you had, you had self control yesterday, Mike. That's right. That's why your abdominal muscle was all right. But I, was, I find I was, that to be a difficult word to pronounce. Abdominable. 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 Thank you for helping me. <laughs> uh, Kadarius Tony, do we see more of uh, the Tony experiment this I, I, week? I think it makes sense that you would see more Tony as every single week goes on. Uh, if McCall Hardman does not play, then I think that's where you could actually ask yourself, would I be willing to take a shot on starting Kadarius Tony? As, as of now, you can't start Kadarius Tony until you see him involved in the offense in a really impactful way. Uh, but, you know, if an injury ahead of him forced his entry onto the field, we know that, you know, when it comes to targets per route run, when he's on the field, he, he earns them targets. Feels like there may be more clarity kind of coming to the wide receiver room in, in Kansas City to me. Like, Juju feels like he is kind of secure. MVS is getting phased out. Yeah, it seems like it. Sky Moore has not been he, he impactful get, in any way. He didn't get way. phased in. No. And so, uh, and then Travis Kelsey, you should probably play him. Yep. Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne. Yeah, Etienne, of course. Trevor Lawrence, I mean, if, if when you're talking a streaming quarterback, teams – just they have to throw so much against the Kansas City Chiefs because the Chiefs put up so many points that it turns into fantasy output. So like twenty third or I'm um, sorry, twenty eighth against quarterbacks. That's the Chiefs. Twenty fourth against running backs. Twenty fifth against wide receivers. Twenty ninth against tight ends because there's just so many plays and so many uh, passing opportunities for the other team that these guys are in play. It's not that I love playing. You're like oh, I'm going to target the Chiefs defense. I'm targeting Chiefs games. You also hope that with the pass rush, Travis Etienne will get involved in the passing game. The Chiefs allow the most receptions per game to the running back, um, and and Etienne is important to this offense. Yeah, and C awesome. Yeah, Christian yeah, Kirk. Yeah, he's, he's in. He's, he's in. in your lineup. Zay Jones, the spot start. Spot you, starter. You can get him in there. Zay Jones or Cortland Sutton, Jason. Zay Jones. Uh, Evan Ingram. You can always risk your life. <laughs> yeah, he, hey, that's one of our gifts. He got hurt the last week. He hurt his back. Uh, he was limited in practice on Wednesday, so you have to pay attention. And like the as 
the craziness of the world, the postman may be back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's what you get. <laughs> like, I don't even know if that drop still exists. Uh, but Dan Arnold would be the play if Evan Ingram is the – there it is. If uh, Schmevin Schmangram cannot play, then Dan Arnold is – Maybe a fun DFS play. He might be a fun throw. DFS play, yeah. Yeah, or – you could end up with what we got in this next matchup with the Cleveland Browns at three and five taking on the six and three Dolphins, and Harrison Bryant could be the uh, whoopsie let you down after Njoku went out. Um, that's the hard part, right? I mean, you have superior athletes, and then you have their backups, and you hope that maybe their backups get involved. We should have the return of David Njoku in this game. That's what we're hearing. Miami is four point favorites. The over under on DraftKings is forty nine. This could be a really fun game. Yeah, this is another game that I think I'm targeting. The The Dolphins' defense has been very injured over the last month and poor. Uh, the Cleveland Browns' defense was really, really bad, and I, I've got like a little twinkling of now that Jadavion Clowney um, and Miles Garrett are, are both back and active, maybe their defense steps it up a little bit. We saw them crush Joe Burrow last time we saw the Browns, um, but... Over the last, you know, five or six games, these are teams that you've wanted to target for big scoring bonanzas. So Nick Chubb, he's been dynamic. He's been great. Kareem Hunt. This matchup looks juicy. Miami's defense has not been able to stop anybody. It's one of the reasons why their offense is so great is they are that perfect uh, match of explosiveness on the offensive side, quick drives at times, and then they just give up points and then they get to go do it again. Mm-hmm. It does feel like when you watch the Dolphins, they they score so quick that you rarely see them with the ball. Like I feel like I'm always watching the other team uh, have the ball, but it's just it's not because the Dolphins aren't doing good; is they're doing too good. That would be like that could be frustrating as a defense. You're like, man, I'm I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> like, Take your time. Like, uh, Stop it, Tyreek. Get a ten ten play drive going on here so I can get some rest. The Cleveland defense is. Um, not good against the run. And so you've had this. You've got Jeff Wilson arrival last week. Raheem Mostert, both of them scored a touchdown. Wilson's was through the air. Are they both startable assets this week? They're both startable, and they're going to be in very, very similar situations where I, I don't – I'm not trying to put them in my lineup, but as a flex option uh, – Tony Pollard or Raheem Mostert? I would go Tony, Tony Pollard, Pollard in that situation. Regardless That's assuming Zeke. Zeke is back. If Zeke's out, obviously it's Tony Pollard. Right. Um, no, but uh, – I would play Jeff Wilson ahead of Mostert. And the reason why is just because I know it's a very small sample size um, of the one game, but I'm I'm including the history with this uh, offensive coach back in the San Francisco days where Jeff Wilson was the pass-catching guy to Raheem Mostert's non-pass-catching work. And we kind of saw that a little bit more in this one game. So I think both players are going to be – they just look awesome. They, they're on a great offense. They could have big blow-up performances. That's why you can put them in your lineup. But if they don't get the touchdown, if it goes to Tyreek or Waddle or you know somewhere else or Gesicki, then I think you'll be disappointed more with Mostert because he might not have the receptions to kind of pad the stats. But they'll, they'll be in a 50-50 split. From weeks four through eight, so you he was – Raheem Mostert saw no fewer than 15 opportunities in a game. Like He was getting – Real usage, a couple games over 20 in that time span. First game with Jeff Wilson, 11. Like That's that's very concerning, and that was the first. This was is the third lowest on the season. This was the first time that Raheem Mostert had been under 50% of the snaps since week one. It, it was uh, – they couldn't play Chase Edmonds. <laughs> they could, right. They couldn't play him, but they yeah. wanted to. Uh, Jalen Waddell, Tyreek Hill, play them. Jason, thoughts on Jalen Waddell in like a dynasty format? I think he is so much better than <laughs> CD Lamb. More like CD Trash. Um, you had Lame sitting right there. Yeah, uh, it, it, it was the the bad joke was the joke. Gotcha. So that's where I went with. Okay. Boston. <laughs> I didn't know you had that on your board, Mike. I love that. So uh, yesterday, we Mike and I reacted pretty strongly to your uh, potential trading for Jalen Waddle, and then you 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 closed the show out and. Within an hour, you had the deal done. That is true. I I appreciate you fellas uh, making me think twice on that. Uh, it wasn't the deal that you 
uh, brought up, but just in a vacuum, basically Waddle versus CD Lamb in a dynasty. I do think that the future arrow continues to go up on Waddle, and the future arrow could go down on CD Lamb as they bring in other wide receivers there. Amari Cooper, yes, please. Yeah. However, <laughs> Kyle, you pointed out his splits yeah. are very interesting, right? He's the weirdest player to project week to week. Also for his whole career. But uh, what what's the situation this year with uh, on the road, Amari Cooper? On the road, he's averaging two for 33. Yuck. He just likes it in Cleveland, huh? I, some people say that. It's yeah. nice. Some people like to be home. That's that's wild. Uh, but you got to play him in this game. The, the Dolphins' defense has struggled, and they're going to need to keep up with the passing game. This is not one of those games – that Nick Chubb can can bear all of the you know responsibility for points, although he will bear a lot of it. Uh, and he's playing against me, so I expect big things. And Peoples Jones, since week four, he is averaging almost five receptions and seventy yards. Like yeah, he's I, just he's it's it's. I like, feel burnt after week one because he went he was six for uh, sixty in week one, and then he came out and, yeah, and was like disappearing act for targets, full goose. Full sure. goes the next week, and there was yeah, there was the two weeks two and you're three. not wrong. I'm just I'm just telling you, I feel a little bit of that first week. Yeah, it's, I I totally get it. Weeks two and three, he he absolutely vanished after week one. But I mean, you're now you're talking five straight weeks that he's he's been seventy plus and four of five and fifty yards the week that he didn't hit seventy. He's, all, he's playable. All of the rankings, the start sit tool, it's on the website thefantasyfootballers.com. It's time to get into our starts of the week. Starts of the week. Jason, why don't you kick this off at the quarterback position? I think you had this guy last week. Uh, I'm going to stay with Tua because he is awesome. He's playing against Cleveland. We just covered this game, the Dolphins passing attack. They are absolutely rolling. And uh, they rank second in passing yards per game, number one in explosive pass rate. He's completing 64% of his passes of 20-plus yards that's the highest mark over the last decade. Thank you, Tyreek Hill. Yep. Uh, and the Browns are allowing the third highest expected uh, points per play. So you're just going to stay in the flames with Tua. And I'll jump in here. Justin Fields forever. Yes. This is so great. This, uh, I am he so, was also your shot of the week last week. I am so excited that we are at the point where it it feels like Justin Fields is an every week starter it was uh, the Justin Fields truthers. Our meetings, they were rough there. Not well attended. They were rough there for a while, but Detroit is the third best matchup for quarterbacks. Over the last month, Justin Fields has been QB 8, 5, 5, and 1. He's just he's running so much, the Bears have figured something out here, and Justin Fields, is he's, he's unlocking that cheat code point scoring for fantasy. All right, I want to borrow. Those steel underpants that you wear, oh, wear so often. Get in here, brother. And uh, I'm going to go with Tom Brady. Oh, man. Against the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> and I understand. Uh, I spicy. brought it up. One touchdown. One touchdown. No touchdowns. One touchdown. One touchdown. I think Brady's due for some positive touchdown regression. Change, he just needs a change of environment. And I think the ending of the last ball game, I know it seems like a small thing to focus on, but if you saw, it, it was like a load off. He's gone through a lot this year. Um, I think, you know, this 2.5% touchdown rate, you're going to see some bounce back. Seattle's a good enough offense to make this game kind of exciting. I think it's time. I think it's time Godwin get. you know what? Oh, no. Oh. 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 Hey, it's, are a, you? it's a Godwin touchdown guarantee. Oh. Okay. Wow. All right. Okay. I guess. See, these things go. have to come about organically. <laughs> yep. They can't come about. You can't manufacture them. Jason, You're taking out your, your betting Jason's apps. Going to DraftKings. Well, yeah, I'll we'll be there in a minute. We'll see. I think we'll get two plus <laughs> touchdowns from Brady. They can't run the football. All right. And uh, so I think it's I think it's Brady time. Plant and no. Had some plant food this week. All right. Yeah. All right. At running back, I'm going for a flex option start of the week. Kareem Hunt uh, on the other side of Tua. I, I think this game is going to be a back and forth game, and I want to give the Foot Clan confidence to play him. Hunt's a solid flex play. He's still seeing nearly 50% of the snaps. This game projects to be one of the best. And since week three, Miami ranks 27th at schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to the running backs. And there's been some split backfields 
that have had success here. Brees Hall and Michael Carter both had uh, great games, 40-plus fantasy points. DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams, almost 30 fantasy points against Miami. He is someone that is very questionable every week. If you've got Kareem Hunt, you are saying, man, I could start him. Should I? This is the week where I I, I like the matchup. What now. would you do with like him and like if it was DeAndre <laughs> Swift or something? Well, that was what made it tough, knowing that uh, Kareem Hunt was my start of the week. But the the comments from Dan Campbell of getting Swift more involved, I, I guess maybe I'm falling victim to that. Uh, but it, it is really really tough between there, those two. We we didn't mention it, but their hand might be forced a little bit. You had uh, Craig, Craig Reynolds, Reynolds yeah. Craig Reynolds, who was playing in front of uh, DeAndre Swift. I mean, it's a good player. But he went on to the IR, and this past week, so I mean, that Justin Jackson was running in front of DeAndre Swift. That could be, that could maybe force some of those opportunities. But in the meantime, my start of the week is J. Willie. It's Jamal Williams. My note saying, will DeAndre Swift ever be good again? I do not know. But in the meantime, J. Willie is getting those opportunities. 24 last week. The Bears are the fourth best matchup for running backs. The Lions, high T. It will be established. Fourth in rush rate in the first half of games, eighth in the second half, and that is while trailing. So they don't care; they just want to run the ball over and over. And they do have a a very large uh, uh, advantage here in their offensive line versus the Bears' defensive line. All right, uh, Miles Sanders is my start of the week at the running back position. Did very well in prime time last week. I we're gonna keep it rolling. Am so frustrated here with Miles Sanders of. Over the course of the offseason, the summer, like both you and I were like, we were rising. He was in our breakout candidates, like in we, the UDK early in the offseason. Like, I, Miles Sanders and my early, and we the, got scared. The early breakout show up at, I think in Detroit, it was Miles yeah. Sanders. I was re getting really hot and bothered by him. And then he comes out and he's like, oh, do not draft me for fantasy football. <sighs> well, he, here's the thing. They you lied uh, to me, Miles. The Eagles are heavy favorites. Double-digit favorites this year. They've averaged 27 points a game. He's the RB12 on the year. Not a joke. Yesterday, Brooks was walking through the office, and he shows me a signed Miles Sanders jersey. We had purchased that for a giveaway, and then we had retired it on a shelf. <laughs> yeah, we last year. Yeah, and we buried. forgot we buried it. We're like, we're never giving this away. No one wants this. And suddenly this resurgence, I think it continues against Washington. Yep, at wide receiver. Yeah. I'm going with Darnell Mooney against the Detroit Lions. Let's go. Let's get in this game. Uh, lost in the shuffle of Justin Fields mania is the fact that Mooney has been very good over the last month. 7.8 targets per game, nearly 60 receiving yards last week. He was 7 for 43 and 1 against Miami, and he's got a better matchup this week. The Lions are allowing the highest percentage of 15 plus yard pass plays, uh, and they are 30th against fantasy wide receivers. Mooney is a very good player. I want pieces in this game. It's time to steal up. I'm going with Cortland Sutton. Ooh, and my brother. wide receiver start of the week. Boston. <laughs> the Titans, we, we may be saying that next week. But the Titans are the third best wide receiver matchup, allowing five points above expectation. They're allowing nearly 14 yards per reception. That's the fifth highest in the NFL. Again, the Broncos are coming off of the bye week, and I think that they get things figured out. Like, Cortland Sutton, to me, is still a very talented player. He does have these hot and cold streaks, and I expect uh, that we will see some more hotness off of the bye week. I, I think we are at the point now. You know, Jason's got his boom-boom kicker. I end up with an almost upset very often. I feel like at this point, Mike needs his steel <laughs> underpants start of the week. Yeah. I, I, because I try to give at least one a week. Every week, you do have one pick that we are disgusted by. Like yeah. we, Jason and I, we, we are really, we take nausea medication every week for one of your picks. And, and, and can you give me that usually, bottle, by the way? <laughs> we spend the week trying to talk you out of it. Right. But then a lot of times, your steel underpants, they pick look the good week. on that beach, man. <laughs> Oh You're out gosh. there just looking good. Yeah. It, like they can't it rust. Through. No, yeah. no, no. That's 100% UV protection. <laughs> Not for the other people around me, though. Getting, that's right. They're getting, they're getting blasted. Just blasted. Very shiny chrome. <laughs> all right. My wide receiver start of the week is, hey, look, one of my favorite players of all time. I used to say a star is born about him. <laughs> I've always been a real. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I can oh. get behind him for a week. Juju Smith-Schuster against Jacksonville the last three weeks. Uh, you're in a boom shakalaka territory here. He's on fire. Wide receiver 7, 4, and 15. Eight or more targets in all but two of his games this year. 
They are throwing the ball at the highest rate because they cannot run it. And uh, we said it yesterday. He, he kind of goes out and he runs like Kelsey-like routes. And when, whenever the other team tackles Travis Kelsey, which is so often. I don't, I don't know if you saw this around the goal line last week. There were two consecutive tackles of Kelsey that they threw flags on. And in the third play, the refs couldn't throw a third flag in a row, but they tackled him again. And when that happens, Juju's just there. He's open. He's in the very. He's so close to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. He can always be seen. And Jacksonville, thirty first in schedule adjusted fantasy points against the wide receiver position. So I will, you know, my guy, Juju Smith Schuster. Yeah, nice. I uh, love to see it. Um, who would you take in a dynasty league, Juju Smith Schuster <laughs> or Allen Robinson? Yeah, I take Juju. Uh, all right, uh, at tight end, I am. Going with Greg D. Yeah. Greg Dulcich. Me. Uh, he's the most popular question on our site this week. Everybody wants to know, can we start Greg D? People are asking, what about Pitts on Thursday or Greg Dulcich? Evan Ingram at Kansas City. Tyler Higby, who was my start of the week coming into today, but with the Matthew Stafford concussion. Or Njoku coming off of injury. I am taking Greg Dulcich over all of those players. He's had three games in his career. He's had three top 12 fantasy performances. I am not quite as confident in the... He's handsome. He is very handsome. Uh, looks strikingly like Weird Al. Um, <laughs> that's what we learned on Halloween. You guys saw that Weird Al featured a picture of me. <laughs> yes. Who did not dress up as Weird Al, but, but he, he loved your Halloween and, costume. And yet you did. Yeah, you and certainly yet did. I did. Uh, look, Greg D has posted a 19% targets per route run. That is great for a tight end. Uh, his three weeks are three top 12 fantasy finishes, and the Titans are 24th in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to the uh, fantasy tight ends. They are 30th uh, out of all teams over the last six weeks. I think that the place Russell Wilson can find success is Greg D against this defense. Uh, my tight end start of the week, as I mentioned, it was supposed to be Kate Otten in that Germany matchup. So maybe you set your alarm clock uh, and wake up and find out if Cade uh, Cameron Brait doesn't Brait, make me that nervous. If Cameron Brait, if he's but it's a fair point. The problem it's is a fair just point. he's just like if every if all the work is for yeah, Cade no, on, I get then it. it's so if Cameron Brait is out, then I'm taking credit for the Cade on start of the week <laughs> right here, right now. Uh, but my my backup option here, I had to go. I did look. You get there fast, and then you take it slow. Cole Komet, aka Cole Camo, which he. Kind of ruined that nickname, but maybe it's back. Maybe it's back. Lions are the third best matchup for the tight end position. Cole Komet finally had more than five targets on the season. It turned into two touchdowns. I'm not expecting two touchdowns, but if you can get at least a little bit of volume in a matchup that could turn into a shootout, you could definitely do worst. Over the last month, the six most routes run at the tight end position. He's on the field a ton. Maybe we figured out Cole Komet. This is maybe. Well, look, if they Maybe. score, if they score as often as they're scoring, he's going to have opportunities in the red zone. That's because you can't Maybe. stop Maybe. everything, right? right. You, if you're going to focus on Justin Fields, you're going to get these screen games. I don't mind it. I'm going with the Muth. He's getting loot oh, against he's New Orleans. Getting so loot. That's a great start. Chase Claypool out the door. 17% of the targets, 19% of the receiving yards. It's time to get loot. George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth are going to do some work. And uh, look, after. Coming back from his concussion, nine targets, seven targets. Such a friend to a rookie quarterback. Finds space, yeah. sure-handed. Dominate the middle of the field. He's going to be good, not just this year, but the rest of the year because the Muth always gets loose. Loose. Let's move on. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Faced with a bossman, I called on the Foot Clan lest I be utterly fooled. From Gondor I raised a horn amazed, 30,000 to battle Robbie Gould. I don't, I don't even think Kyle could handle that one. And I know you participated in the, you know, editing process. <laughs> now, Jason, That's the edited version? Jason is a master with words. They, thank you, Kyle. The Horn of Gondor, and you're fighting Robbie Gould? Not just me. 
thirty thousand. The Foot Clan are with me. I'm, I'm very. This segment you know, has taken a turn. It's tough to follow. <laughs> um, Robbie Gould, though, he's a pretty ornery guy. Yeah, and we're going to need all thirty thousand of you to help me take him down. But he is my boom boom kicker. Of the I week. would put my money on you and thirty thousand people. Yeah, against a kicker. Against a kicker. I mean, come on, kicker shouldn't even be in the league. And yet you built this segment of research. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because I'm so pro kicker. Uh, the the matchups that we didn't cover today, we're going to cover them tomorrow. Did you let Jason Myers go? Uh, he's with he's with us now. Oh, he's um, fighting alongside. He's are you trying to follow the story? Stockholm the syndrome. Yeah, of course. Well, I wasn't the one holding him hostage. Robbie Gould was. Oh, oh, that's what happened. Yeah, he's, he's the, the boss man. Robbie Gould was the mysterious villain from yeah. last. Okay, now okay. It's, now it's more interesting. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, we the, the book will be published at the end of the year. It better be. I need it. We're, we also have another. I need another, the subtitles for the regular <laughs> segment. We also have um, another podcast that is just a companion podcast. For oh, the Boom really? Boom Kicker. It's just like you know, we where we talk this about fan, uh, you know, fan theories. Yeah, we're just getting the cliff notes right now. You got the whole. Yeah, mm. I had no idea. Oh yeah, just keep looking for it on your podcast app wherever you get podcasts. Wheel of Shame tomorrow, and uh, oh yeah, get ready, everybody. It's <laughs> a good one. Yeah, I understand that you have some prepared for me. It, look, it's been so long since I've been shamed that I um, I don't even remember what it's like. If you're a fan of nonsense, yeah, tune in. Ah, that's great. That's great. Am I going to need to wash anything off? No, no, no. It'll be easy. All right. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening. Review the show if you are so inclined. And you can watch it over on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Back with the matchups tomorrow. I will spin the wheel of shame. We'll share our DFS lineups. And we'll catch you up with the news, injury updates, and things of that nature. Enjoy the game tonight, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.